Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Why AI. This week, we're joined by Darren White. In this episode, Darren talks to us about his role in AI and how he got there. He also provides some wonderful insight into the world of AI and how it's being used in education today. This is definitely one you don't want to miss, so I hope you enjoy. So thank you for joining me today, Darren. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Good. Yeah, no problem at all. No worries. Um, so yeah, welcome to Why AI. Um, so first of all, for the listeners at home, could you just give a brief rundown of, of who you are, what you do, um, and how you sort of, you know, got into it, got into your your profession? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm formerly a teacher, so I taught for for 24 years. Um, I was a modern language teacher um, okay. by, by by trade, for want of a better yeah. word. Um, and kind of pr- progressed through uh, at school level, secondary school, um, into the kind of the pastoral route, ended up being um, a senior leader, I was a senior leader in, in school for just over 10 years. Um, oh, right, okay. And then decided um, for a number of factors that I, I've, I was kind of ready for a new challenge. Um, and that was in around about 2017. Um, I had a, a short period of time I spent in alternative provision, which was absolutely a huge eye opener, but definitely not the right challenge for me. Right. Okay. How how do you mean an eye opener? If you don't mind me asking, in what in what just, sense? Just incredible in terms of the amount of of detail and work and, and the care and the thought that goes into working with some of our most you know troubled young people and troubled yeah. personally, but also because of their circumstances as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you know the work that that people in alternative provision do, it, it just absolutely blew me away. And hats off uh, to them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, very very difficult circumstances um, that seem to be getting you know even more difficult as time goes on, as sort of social media and everything else has its impact, and and it's much easier for people to connect with each other. That's sometimes a good thing, sometimes not a good thing. Absolutely. So yeah, um, yeah. So. I did a a short stint in, in alternative provision because it was something I'd always wanted to do, yeah. um, but quickly realised it wasn't really mm. for me. Yeah. Um, so I went back into mainstream school, but um, focused really on the kind of marketing and the, for one, it, it wasn't teaching and learning and, and ed tech at that particular point. It was the use of, in particular, Google tools and how you could use those to be more effective uh, and more efficient and to collaborate and looking at things in terms of um, improving workload for people, really. Okay. Um, and then in 2019, something rather large happened. Um, and I was in a very fortunate position that when when COVID hit and lockdown came along and everything else, because I'd been working and kind of upskilling myself really and retraining uh, for want of a better word, I was in a good position to help other people. Um, and when in, when lockdown initially started, I also had a little bit of time to help other people. Mm. Uh, and through my connections uh, as a Google certified educator and trainer, um, I also had some good connections um, globally through um, the global uh, Google educator group. Uh, and we ended up kind of putting on various different sorts of trainings for staff um, across the globe almost on a 24-hour basis at one stage throughout the yeah pandemic. yeah keeping up with the time zones all around so, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly which was which is, is a challenge in itself um but yeah so we ran like online boot camps for about four thousand people between a group of us and all completely volunteer based but that really kind of ignited a passion in terms of skills development and things like that for me Yes. And and also, the, you know, the impact on teaching and learning. Uh, and that led me really to a situation where uh, a couple of year, years ago, I got the opportunity to start supporting um, our trust schools in a more central role, initially as a two day a week secondment that then moved to three days, then to five days um, and is now my full time full time position. So I'm academic wow. technology lead for, for the Academy's Enterprise Trust. So we've got 57 schools across England. Um, ranging from sort of Middlesbrough up in the northeast all the way down to Plymouth and Gloucester all the way across to Clacton with some yeah. some real diversity, um, primary, secondary and special schools. Okay, right. So you get the full. Yeah. The full Which range. I think is really important. You know, I think 
you know, the, the special schools do a fantastic job and, and and we're trying to encourage more and more of our primaries and our secondaries to engage with those people working in the in the in the special schools because they've got so many tricks and so many tools yeah. you know, at their disposal that sometimes when you're in isolation in a large school and you're dealing with one student who's got a particular particular challenge mm-hmm. you kind of you, you thinking on your own a little bit but actually we're now saying let, let's tap into these networks because because these guys have got yeah. a lot of experience that they I was going to say it's the experience isn't it if you can yeah. tap into the experience and it's yeah yeah for sure yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah, fascinating. So I, 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 you quite, quite enjoy, you quite enjoy the job. I mean, it sounds, it sounds Love like it. you sort of stumbled onto it. I feel like, uh, you know, I've, I've had quite a lot of conversations with, not obviously not uh, the same, same roles as what you have, but similar sort of, you know, a, you know, sort of along the same kind of lines. And it always seems to be a, a bit of a profession that people, you know, usually teachers stumble onto, um, and it's, it's. <laughs> I think I think that's the case because you know it's a bold decision you know for mm. for any school or any trust to create a new position when there yeah. hasn't been one existed. You know, it's really easy to say, well, we've never had one of those before, so why do we need mm. one now? Um, but you know, got to keep a, up with the times. <laughs> You've got to keep up with the times. Speaking yeah, of, speaking of, I mean, do you have you come across AI? Obviously, I've got to speak about AI. It's called Why AI. So, um, yeah. do, have you come across, you know, in in your in your your job role, have you come across quite a, a bit of AI, or is it not something you mm. you come across much at the moment? No, definitely. I've been I've been obviously, as you can imagine, being a a trainer and an innovator and a coach as well. I've been um, diving into various different aspects of AI, various different tools um and trying out and and seeing from my own perspective what some of the potential is um very fortunate to you know to have some very good contacts with the likes of dan fitzpatrick and and louise jones from from thinglink who you know keep me keep me modest and and keep me thinking (laughs) about the positives as well as the negatives you know Um, because it's 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 a little bit you know, it's, it's almost like it's one of those populists that you either love it or you hate it and there's no in between kind of marmite sort of discussions going on at the moment um and i try and not sit on the fence but i try and see things from both perspectives so Absolutely. we've done a lot of work in the trust with um sort of swot analysis around the use of ai um, okay. and what, what the strengths and the weaknesses are but what are also the opportunities and the threats and then how can we move forward um in a in a responsible and considered way See, that's yeah. the best. That's a great approach. I feel like you said, I, I think it's it, people do seem to either be sat on that, the all for it. And, you know, that it should be the only way that we're thinking. And then obviously there's the, either, which seems to be less and less. It seems to be less and less the, the yeah. group that that despise it as such. But they obviously, you know, the, the, the people still exist. And it's, it, you know, it, I, th- I think that's a very good approach is, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think it's one of those things, you know, people... If if you read social media and you watch the news and everything else, then then AI is either being kind of lauded as either the the great leveler mm. because it's making everything available to everyone and therefore you know it's it's democratizing creativity and all that kind of thing because yeah. anyone can create things anyone, anyone can create, can create it. code anyone yeah. can create artwork I'm seeing the high profile kind of photo award winning oh i'm sorry it was ai and and Mm. all of this but (laughs) it's also got the potential to be the great exacerbator as well i think because there's there's a real you know we we talk for a long time in education about deprivation and, and the lack of access to things and actually if you are a young person now who isn't having access to ai in a considered and reasonable and responsible way yeah then then those people that have got access, they are going to be streets ahead, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, there are pitfalls. Yes, there are safeguarding elements to bear to bear in mind. Absolutely, there are. Um, but if but if you think about it, you know, it's either going to level the, level the player field for everyone, mm-hmm. um, which might be a good thing, you know, because it actually it might force us to rethink assessment because we actually need to do things in different ways to, to get the best out of people. Mm-hmm. But it also has the potential to 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 exacerbate like i say that that divide and those that have got access and have got the access to people showing them how to use it effectively Mm. they are just going to fly 
And those who don't have that ability or don't have that access to find out, well, how do I write a good prompt? Yeah. Then they're going to end up not really understanding it. And and I saw some some stuff online earlier on uh, this morning where um, there was a survey done around students' use of AI or young people's use of AI, particularly through um, Snapchat, through the the My AI. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a large number of people there who, who were already having voted in a poll were saying, yeah, but it's, it's, it's OK. It's a bit gimmicky and I'm kind of bored with it now. You know, and I think, you know, that is because they're only seeing one aspect of it. Mm. Of course. But unless they've shown the other aspects, they might switch off to it and suddenly find themselves kind of miles away yeah. from where they need to be. It's it's interesting you you say that we I um when I, uh, Steve who um is on the podcast quite regularly he um me and him were talking about a similar sort of thing and not just in um you know in every sort of sense of the divide in you know the divide aspect of it, it globally because I think that'll be you know uh, will that create a, so that the you know the countries that perhaps aren't you know uh, have got anywhere near as much access to technology as we do over here. You know, will that just start? Will that change things even more? And then also, and in, in you know, nationally as well in our own country, will that the the segregate us? Which is obviously a very heavy, you know, <laughs> heavy thought process. But yeah, it, it yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those things. That, look, what I've been trying to do with with staff and, and not just staff with colleagues with friends and other people i've been talking to you know because it's it's bigger than just education obviously mm. i've been trying to get people to to look at things um in a in a responsible way i've kind of you know i love an acronym as as do a lot of people so i've, I've recently been um using the acronym boost and and talking about yeah. ai boosting your performance and your potential from the point of view of of making sure that whatever you generate through ai making sure first of all that you're happy that it's balanced so are you kind of bias aware with your prompting but also are you checking the output to make sure that there's not any obvious or, or less obvious bias within there um you know have you crafted your prompt properly and have you reviewed the output so that's the kind of like the b of it and then the open side of it are you open about the fact you've used it you know you're honest to the fact actually i've used ai to generate this you know instead of trying um, to pass it off as your own absolutely um mm. because and but then taking ownership mm. uh, and saying you know okay i've used chat gpt or bard or whatever to generate this but actually i'm the one who's putting it out there of course so i'm responsible for it i'm accountable the is on you yeah yeah i can't turn around and say well i got i got you know chat gpt to write that letter that we sent to all parents um so it's not my fault yeah <laughs> That's not that. That's gonna be. Yeah, that is definitely gonna be something that people have to have to look at for sure. Because it's just no. it's irrelevant, isn't it? At the end of the day, like you say, it's got your name at the bottom of the the the, the letter that's going out. So exactly. And then the, the other two, the S, is make sure it's secure. So mm. more importantly than ever in schools, making sure you're not plugging in student data and things like that and asking it to write a report for you, mm. uh, that kind of stuff. So is it, you know, are you putting in the right sort of data? Is it safe to do so? And is it ethical to do so? And then finally, you know, the T really being time, because yes, AI can save you a lot of time, um, but is it truly saving you time or are you doing it just because you can? Um, yeah. And I think, particularly for teachers there's there's a real kind of like um for want of a better word kind of like um there's a real incentive to try ai because everyone's talking about saving time using ai but if you're not in a position where actually what you're doing is saving you time or at the very least enhancing what you're already doing mm. then actually it probably is a bit gimmicky and it's not going to have any any longevity and it's not mm. and it's not going to last you know so it's not going to stay the course so trying to look at things from that perspective and it's been really encouraging to see actually some of the more kind of the bespoke um uses of ai coming out so i've, I've had a bit of a look around at looking at um slt ai which is designed specifically to support school leaders in generating okay. content they might need so it's using a large language model that's trained on that kind of information. And I think that's a really interesting um, step forward. And, and Merlin Mind as well, 
Um, I've been very fortunate to work with Merlin Mind. I used to have a Merlin Mind unit in my classroom, which is basically like a, you know, a virtual assistant for, for teachers. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, I can be the other side of the classroom and I can just ask it to to change the tab on the screen for me and it will, oh, or to really find a okay. video for me and I can just use my voice. So can the students. Um, but they're looking at building a, um, a large language model that basically schools or trusts will be able to chart. Um, will be able to train, train yeah. with their own knowledge base. Yeah. So you can so be sure up. it's 100% secure. Their own, for example, you could plug in all of your curriculum content. And if a student asks for some information about Henry VIII, you know it's only going to get the information that you can included within your curriculum. Brilliant. It's not yeah. going to get anything outside of that, mm. which is a good thing in terms yeah. of that way forward but again you've got to have that that view to the you know the unconscious bias as well actually is your curriculum looking at the bigger picture so you know there, there's bigger conversations to be had as well but certainly it really interesting to see those developments but yeah, yeah. It, my, my general feeling is be responsible but you know be bold try it yeah but, definitely well, i mean it sounds like that it, it, like you say there's there's obviously the big questions to be to be asked and answered about it um, but as far as fr from where we're at at the moment with it, and especially with how new, obviously AI has been around a long time, but which people seem to forget because they think this is just the way that it, you know, this is it, this is this is AI now. But obviously, it's had a massive, massive boost over the last. Oh, let's use the word, uh, but um, over the I last six months or so. But um, I think that's really interesting, actually. I think that's probably why I'm so kind of like, yeah, let's just try it because obviously, having been a language teacher. I've been dealing with Google Translate or various yes. other options that are available for a long time with students using it, trying to pass it off as their own work, me yeah. being able to spot it straight away. That straight away. Not yeah. Not their own work. Then actually teaching them why it's obvious it's not their own work. Yeah. And that itself helping them to develop. And sometimes they may have then developed better ways of using it that wasn't so easy to spot. But they've learned something. You know. still learned something, yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not what you um, wanted as such. I, mean, we, I used to love kind of like, and there's loads of examples on YouTube where, you know, you you take a, fav uh, a famous song, you put it through Google Translate in a number of languages uh, and then translate it back in again into English and then see what it comes up with. And it's hilarious, but it's a really good way of demonstrating to the student, mm. to the students that, yeah, this is not a human being and therefore it can't be 100% relied on because it's it's taking things out of context or it's using its own database that it's got available. And if it's not in that database, then it's not going to return it. So it was a brilliant one for spell checking, because, of course, when you use something like Google Tran Translate, if you spell the word wrong, it doesn't translate it. Yeah. Um, what students used to do is not realize they'd spelled the initial word wrong. So it would leave it as it is. And they'd just go, oh, that's brilliant. It's the same in Spanish. Fantastic. <laughs> You know, and and <laughs> explaining to them actually, look, if you don't get this right in the first place, your, yeah. your input determines your output. So exactly so the, the same same, same principle. Product. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, Fantastic. yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. It is. It is. It's very intriguing. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm. It sort of leads me on to what I was. What I was gonna sort of ask you. Um. In in say we've got a you know a time scale for example. Say five years from now. Just go five years where do you see education and ai's place in education well well i mean if we're going on the track record of education and rates of change mm. five years i mean potentially we might not be very far down the line no um but one would hope that that's not the case okay um, i think you know um i think the fact that ai has suddenly exploded mm. has put a little bit more of an onus on everyone to to start to to sit up and take notice and i think the movement around wanting there to be some kind of regulation and quality control will move things forward but i think mm. i don't think it's going to go very fast very quickly in that that arena so i think no. probably heading for a couple of years of um, almost kind of like f feeling our way through in the dark to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, I do feel already that there's there's a lot of um, bandwagon jumping in terms of people 
making use of AI for really, really kind of insignificant things mm. just so that they can badge it as being AI integrated because they see that as a trend and therefore we're using AI suddenly yeah. raising your profile. Yeah. But actually, is it AI? <laughs> Is it AI? human human nature's funny, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, very it's funny it, that way. So there is an element of that a little bit. And there's there's obviously there's an element of very similar things being developed across the world and, yeah. and different examples of very, very similar products that have been plugged in using chat GPT or and you know or whatever, um, that are doing very, very similar things. So it'd be interesting to see as the landscape moves, yeah. the the longevity of those products. And what sticks around and what doesn't. Um, I think, you know, the, the integration with AI, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a big Google user myself. Um, so the likes of things like Duet to streamline workloads and things will be brilliant in industry. It will be really brilliant in uh, education for a small number of people. Right. But I don't see it going much wider than that to start off with, because I think it's quite niche and and generally those people that that are kind of needing to save the most time in education probably the ones that have got the least time to save in the first place so probably don't get enough time to play around with it okay uh, so five years from now i think you know it will be something that all all young people are used to mm. um, i think hopefully they will be more aware of it i think it will I think it will advance the digital citizenship side of things uh, right. and the ability to, you know, to spot a fake and all that kind of thing. But but then that that's a, another interesting argument. There's There's been a lot of conversation around, you know, a, p, p, um, scammers using AI to try and um, scam people. because that's what scammers do, right? Um, by using AI to write word perfect emails. Mm. And I'm like, but that's not what scammers are trying to do. No. They don't want to try and scam everybody. They want to work out who are the ones who are going to fall for the glaringly obvious errors because they're the ones that are going to sign away their savings. Yeah. So actually generating a, a perfect, grammatically wonderful email not really as a scammer me. is no good because no. that's not going to sift through everybody to get you to the people you really want to deal with. So I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding from that perspective as well that, you know, not sometimes good isn't the best. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, something that's terrible does a great job. It's like, you know, advertising, you put a spelling mistake in it, people will tell you straight away, but boy, have you raised its profile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's you know, very good. Very good shout. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you um do you have any tools that are sort of your your go to's, if you like, uh, that, that you that you are quite, quite fond of? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I, I use the tools that are built in within within Google as well. So yeah. uh, I've been making use of things like practice sets because we've had access to the beta, um, which is is using AI to to to, to suggest uh, skills and support material for students so they can work I at see. their own pace. Yeah, which is which is really nice. So you know, you can create a practice set. Um, say, for example, it's on coastal erosion, for, um, and you can upload you can add questions you can then tag the skills that the students are expected to display and then the ai will help you generate um, youtube clips or documents that are really useful so the students can complete the questions but if they get stuck they can go and they can press on the little help button and that will then surface those pre-checked videos for them and everything else but without all of the the adverts and the you know the millions of videos of dancing cats and all that kind of thing <laughs> so so it, it it cuts all of that down for you um and also um sort of adding questions into youtube as well that's got um some really useful ai integration now as part of the beta where uh, actually it will watch the video for you and suggest some questions that you might want to ask so in terms of time saving for teachers absolutely superb but then gives you the feedback afterwards to say, right, everyone understood question one. Question two was a really low scorer for everyone. Question three, this and the other, you might want to um, go back over this in more detail another time, sort of thing. Sorry, just it's all right. Argue, no, 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 worry about it. Just arguing with the dog. Um, <laughs> I don't know what he's eating, but he shouldn't be. It's just uh, a bit. <laughs> yeah. Sausage dogs, not good. 
um, <laughs> uh, so what else? And um, Canvas tools I've been using a lot as well. So yeah. um, the text to image generator is is really good fun. I use it a lot. Um, Ca Canvas text to image generator and Adobe Firefly. I use a lot when I'm blogging purely to get an image to to kind of fit the context rather than okay. sitting there for ages going through google search saying right i'm looking for an image that works but i want it to be able to be to be used you know more widely mm. instead of wasting my time doing that it's just a quick right give me a picture of you know a dinosaur sat behind a an apple mac or whatever <laughs> and away you go you've got what you're looking for um but that's also brilliant as well for you know um creative writing because as a teacher if you want students to do a piece of creative writing why not give them a completely out there prompt that mm. that's never existed before and say here's an image you know whether that's through you know canva whether that's through firefly whether that's through something like sky uh, sky labs blockade to give them that 360 view doesn't really matter it just gives them a completely different stimulus to work with um, and then obviously like little things like canvas magic design for presentations is fantastic yeah, great, um, so i was sharing great. that with some colleagues colleagues last week you know five or six words create a presentation and then you go through that boost process to make sure you're happy with the content and away you go you know yeah. so yeah the content creation of, side of things is yeah really and then and then also google bard um i've been using and chat gpt as well um i i experimented with using chat gpt as a, as a personal coach um so I wrote a prompt so basically i can go on at any point and if i'm kind of a bit sort of oh i don't know how i'm going to approach today how should i prioritize things i can just get the actually the the chat gpt coach will kind of help me process particularly when i'm working from home i find that quite useful because it got, mm. gives me an opportunity to bounce ideas right um, I that see. Maybe, if you're working in isolation um and bard as well um for you know even things like you know app scripts and things like that so for writing code because i'm not not brilliant at that and it just gives me a starting point that i can then work from yeah that's brilliant great f f comprehensive answer <laughs> <laughs> um yeah wonderful um just to sort of obviously we don't have um we're gonna be sort of wrapping up soon so just uh because i always want the I, and i always say this i always want the the um the podcast to be informative to you know whoever's listening whether it be teachers or, or whoever um obviously it has been so I, I appreciate that very very uh very I've, i feel like i've learned quite a bit just um advice if you were to give uh you know obviously i know you could probably talk for quite a while on the subject but just no. just <laughs> in, a, in a condensed in a condensed uh you know uh, a paragraph or two what would be your advice to a teacher that perhaps is coming across ai they're a little bit you know fumbled by it and and you know they they don't know where to start um i'd say definitely um if you're on social media either follow the hashtag AI in education or, if, or if you're on Facebook, there's an AI in education um, Facebook group full of yes. people who are all in a similar boat. And, and I tend to find as well, it's an interesting one. I, th I tend to find that Twitter users tend to be a little bit more kind of um, self-sustaining and Facebook users tend to be a little bit more. I'd like a bit of help with this. Okay. Um, so you get, I think you get a very different audience between the two. So I find the conversations that go on in Facebook are a little bit more those people who are really not quite so sure mm. and are just dipping their toe in the water and would like somebody to dip their toe in with them. Um, and right. there's some really good conversations that go on with people saying, well, I've thought about doing this. You think it would work or, you know, well, 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 let's give it a try. Whereas Twitter tends to be, I've done this and it's brilliant. Mm. Or, or no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, quite stir, yeah. quite strong views, but opinionated. Absolutely. It is an opinionated place to where <laughs> if you're but, in some yeah, areas. <laughs> I would say yeah, ultimately try it, you know, play around with it and, and have a think about what you can do with it. And and always try and just think, you know, outside the box, but inside the box at the same time. You know, yes, you could do amazing things, but what are some of the really simple things that you could do that would make your life so much easier as well? Um, and whether that's just simply, you know, you've had an email come in at the end of a long day and you would probably spend 45 minutes trying to draft the best example answer. Why not just get it to come, get Bard or chat GPT to suggest an answer for you and then just tweak it from there and just speed things up and take take the load off yourselves. You know, it doesn't have to be world, you know, groundbreaking use of something completely brand new and fantastic, although, of course, it can be. 
yeah brilliant fantastic well uh i really appreciate it, darren thank you for uh thank you for joining me today it'd be great to have you on again at some point um, i'd love to yeah really brilliant it. fantastic brilliant. thank you Darren. Thanks, take care thank you take care bye